Hey YouTube, what's up? Apple here with another episode of Apple Look Stuff Up. So uh, first I just want to, before I get into the episode, um, it's very early in the morning here. Um, I'm currently in the process of getting myself accustomed to being on the graveyard shift starting this week. So if I appear a little more tired than normal, that's why. I apologize. Um, but anyway, at least I have some nice morning light coming through my window here to properly light me up for this video so uh today i'm getting away from anything political psychological or historical and i'm finally going to do something a little on the nerdy side so this one is um inspired by work actually so i was in a training where we were learning about um the navigation system on my plane and there was a um a component that no one in the class really understood how it worked or why it worked uh just that it did work um and that one component is uh something known as a fiber optic uh gyro or a like light optic uh gyro so the idea of this is that um, there's like a coil. So like think of like a, like a wound coil of uh, fiber optic and you shoot a laser um, that splits and goes into both ends of this coil. And what'll happen is, is that if that coil is spinning one way or the other, um, the light is going to be have a certain amount of interference in the that comes out the back side into the detector and that can tell if the um, gyro has rotated one way or the other and then it can very extremely accurately tell just how much it's rotating at what force and speed and so on um, really crazy interesting stuff but one of the really good questions that came out of it is well one light travels at a constant speed it doesn't change and technically when you think about it that light is traveling through the same amount of coil through one side as it is the other so why does this rotation um why does it cause this this difference to happen where the light takes longer to travel through one part of the coil or through the one side of the coil than it does the other when it's rotating and so i had to do some looking it up because i i could not properly answer that question when we were in class and it took some looking up to figure it out myself so i thought hey uh why not make a video on that so it's uh it's actually pretty interesting it's um there was a scientist um by the name of uh, george sonya um it's i'm trying to pronounce that correctly or sonyak um it's a french french name but anyway he was um an early 20th century late 19th century scientist who um was working around the theories of relativity that einstein had come out with and there was this proposition that light traveled through something that they like to call the ether um so just to give an idea of um why they thought that we had a pretty good understanding of how waves worked and we finally discovered that the that light travels in a very similar way to other waves. Um, so for instance, waves in water or in some sort of a liquid, uh, we, you know, we've figured out that, you know, they can interfere with one another. And depending on how in phase or out of phase waves are, they can, they can cause all sorts of crazy things to happen where they change the amplitude and frequencies and things like that. Um, and, then we started to discover that sound waves work the same way well all of these waves have something in common they all travel travel through some sort of a medium and the thing was that light 
can travel through space and space seems to be nothing. There's no air, there's no molecules. Technically there's molecules. There's just so much less molecules out there that, you know, sound can't travel through space yet light seems to travel even better. Like it, it travels with no problem through space. And so the, proposal was that there must be some kind of a, an ether that propagates throughout the entire universe that light uses to travel through. Um, so this scientist went out to try and disprove this. And what he did is basically do the same thing that these gyros do. He set up a bunch of mirrors and shot and uh, like basically with a splitter that would split a, a light beam and they would all hit the mirrors and come back and he would try and measure the interference. And um, the idea is that if he put some sort of rotation to it, that um, it would prove that there was some sort of an ether that it could affect the speed of the light um, essentially. Uh, the idea it's it's kind of similar to with um, jets where as they get closer and closer to the speed of sound, they the the sound waves that are coming off the front of the plane are not traveling much faster than the plane itself, and it can create these sonic booms that we've seen. Um, well, this experiment proved that light doesn't really care about how fast you're moving. Uh, you could be moving at close to the speed of light. You could have a laser pointer pointed straight in front of you. And to you, that light is traveling away from you at the speed of light, even though you are traveling near the speed of light yourself. It's a little mind blowing. Um, and the other mind blowing part of that is the fact that someone else observing that person also sees the light traveling away from them at the speed of light. Like it, um, it's crazy. It's, it's nutty. It's strange to think about. Um, but that's probably for another episode. So anyway, um, the best way for me to describe it is if you were to think of, um, two cars or uh yeah let's let's go with two cars um and they're traveling down a road towards each other and they're not going to hit each other they're just going to go past each other um however the track that they're on or the road that they're on is moving and that that road is moving either with one of them or against the other what ends up happening is, is that one car, if they're both traveling at the same speed, one car will get to the end of that road before the other one will, because it's basically traveling against the road. So it's um, because they're, they're both having to go at the same speed, one will reach the end of it then the, before the other one will. And, um, with what we understand with how waves interfere with one another, these gyros are able to very accurately tell just how much of a phase difference there is between the two light sources and can calculate this rotation. Um, so what, what makes these gyros so cool and why do we use them in planes? Well, planes have um, some very special features to them in in how we can calculate their movement which is extremely important for navigation um, even though gps has gotten extremely accurate and reliable planes travel very fast in comparison to say me walking down the street or even me driving my car uh, planes travel so fast that it can that by the time that the gps can figure out where it thinks you are, you are already pretty far away from that location. So they developed something known as inertial uh, navigation systems. And what they essentially do is they can be like, oh, you are going in this direction at this speed 
and yada 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 and it can figure out that you should be in this one location so in conjunction with gps that's constantly um, adjusting it so that it's more and more accurate this gives a better real-time understanding to the pilot as to exactly where their plane is in the sky so how do gyros work with all of that well imagine my hand here is like a you know, i'll try and get it as there um is a plane so you got the front of the plane here the tail of the plane here and then well, my thumb and pinky are the, the wings um, and there's three different um, axes that it can um, rotate around. So um, the first one is pitch. So that's up and down like that. Uh, then you have roll, which is like this. And then yaw, which is like that. So what they do is they take these three gyros um, and around the center of mass of, this, um, of the plane, they put these gyros to where they can calculate the roll, the yaw, and then the pitch of the plane to figure out how the plane is situated in the in in the sky, like what angle on each of those axes is the plane facing. Then it can take um, three other measurements uh, using accelerometers to figure out how much force is being applied in either the forward or back, the left and right and then the up and down and it can use a combination of these three things to figure out how fast it's going what direction it's going and whenever something happens to the plane that causes it to change velocity in one direction or another um, and that's where inertial navigation comes from so pretty cool um I learned a lot going down this rabbit hole of how these gyros work. Um, and I really love the nerdy physics stuff, especially around science and relativity and space time and all of that. Um, I'm going to try and keep it as layman as possible. I don't necessarily, I'm not really an expert in, you know, astrophysics or um, anything like that. I just, Take it up as a hobby is something I really enjoy learning about. Um, but I'll put a link in the description to uh, uh, one of my absolute favorite YouTube channels uh, known as Space Time. If you want to dive into it, highly recommend it. Um, I will say the concepts are very, um, very mind blowing, but also very hard to grasp, um, especially if you don't have too much of a physics background. So uh ease your way into it i would say you know don't just deep dive into one of the more complicated or more advanced uh videos that are on that uh site but um i really enjoy learning about all of the different ways that we're trying to figure out how the universe works and just by looking into how this little tiny device in our planes can help detect it, how much it's rolling or pitching or whatever um it kind of came full circle to one of my things I really enjoy in physics, which is the theory of relativity and the speed of light and things like that. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned a little something about this. Um, I apologize again for being kind of tired and um, uh, still getting used to literally staying up all night long. And uh, yeah, um, Probably not going to be putting too much into the uh, the editing of this video either, but I will make sure to put in the description down below uh, the links to where I looked up the Sanya or Sanyak um, effect and how these uh, fiber optic gyros work. Uh, there's a lot more advanced like equations and things like that that are uh, uh, in these links that I'll be providing for you guys. So if you want to deep dive into the nitty gritty math and science behind it, by all means, please do. And if I made any mistakes, a lot of this, I've just kind of uh, did my own research, tried to understand it as well as I possibly could so I could communicate it. If I got anything wrong, if something just didn't quite make sense, please feel free to throw it in the comments down below. 
um if you enjoyed the video hit that thumbs up if you didn't like it hit the thumbs down and if you want to see more of these uh please consider subscribing and i really appreciate everyone who's uh supporting me just by watching my videos it's uh this has been a pretty rewarding little thing that i've been doing and uh, uh yeah i uh i'm i'm really excited to see where this goes and i i hope i can continue to produce some decent content that people enjoy watching so anyway guys uh, have a wonderful wonderful day and uh keep looking stuff up <laughs>